Welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today uh, we have a pair of Dana 44 flat top steering knuckles. All right, and our customer brought these knuckles in and also brought in a kit. And before this, I've never seen this kit, um, but it, it makes perfect sense to me. And after uh, looking on Mr. N's topic there, he's got on the internet there on high steer, uh, and he has a little bit of information in fact actually uh, the whole pattern and location well most of the location I went ahead and made up a, uh, a CAD uh, cartoon assisted drawing and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set up I have one that we need to work on and the other one is an older one it's already had some machine work done to it and it already has the whole pattern in here so we're gonna be mounting this one in the mill first and we're going to find out the missing dimensions, X and Y. And, uh, and then we'll be able to go ahead and transfer our information learned over to set up and put the holes in the next one and mill the surface. All right. Now we have to hold this down to the table. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a round disc that will clamp and hold this down to the mill table. And we're going to be playing in the lay. So we got some lathe work, some milling work, and some drilling work. So let's get to it. All right, we just laid down a fresh piece of paper here on our granite, and the reason why is we've these he blasted our customer blasted these areas up for us to get all the rust and mill scale off of them, but they still are really kind of rough, and we want to make sure that we have good flat surfaces to play with there. And one one this is going to be our mounting surface here, and then this right here is where the high. Uh, high steering arm is going to mount and we want to make sure that it's going to seat correctly and we'll decide whether we're going to take a very minimum skim across there to make it a hundred percent or what but we'll be able to tell that but for right now we're going ahead and we're going to start off and we're going to grab this real low so that it doesn't chatter and we can hold it real even and take a quick peek at it it's always good to really we are you know we there's a lot of hollows in there but we're solid we can see that we are contacting all the way around so it is nice and flat and that's the main importance right there we're not gonna have to try to clean that up to mounting surface or anything else just smooth and flat it is our surface that is 90 degrees or perpendicular to the axis of the bearings and that's the key thing it it kind of sets up your automatic surface that uh, level or deck that we're going to be doing on this surface right here because with this clamp down solid this is perfectly flat and level and we can just come across and mill it down to our height we want Okay, like I said, it doesn't have to be 100%. We're going to leave it right there. That's fine. All right, we're going to kiss this a little bit now. Just a couple strokes so we can see where the highs are. All right, we can see a little bit of pulling in around this bolt right here. We are, we're, this little lip right here, we're hitting all the way out there. And we're pretty firm over here. It's not bad. It's pretty pretty decent yeah I think we're gonna we're gonna lap this a little bit until we we get down here I mean it, it is looking really good but I want to make sure that we got a really good surface right right below where this arm is gonna bolt to Looking pretty good. We're going to blow our paper out. Don't want none to get in your eyes.
getting pretty decent. Okay, we're going to call that good. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to go over to the lathe and we're going to start turning a donut. You know, they'll have a half inch draw hole, little lip that'll grab a hold of this lip right here because that's machine flat and uh, slight clearance for that bore and then that'll be able to clamp that down we can come up here and we can dial a zero in and set our alignment and all of that on the uh, the upper holes here okay this basically is not this this piece right here was already turned and I've used it for shoulders and pressure drives and a couple of things this has a half inch hole in the center here already <laughs> And it does run real true. So we're going to go ahead and use that because that's a nice uh, uh, draw bar or a draw bolt that we're going to use with the T-nut slot and hold this down. Now I get uh, I get about uh, 1740 or so uh, there and on the inside here I get uh, Looks like one two hundred, but it's probably like one three sixteenths. We'll call that one. And we're like two and a half here, so we're gonna hog some material off of this first. We'll get down close and we'll do some measurements. Uh, two three hundred. All right, we've uh, got down here, and this is going to be our last cut on this minor diameter here. We got seven eight, and we want to bring it like seven forty. We can have about fifteen thousand or five five ten clearance would be fine. Okay, 741, 42, I think that's going to be fine. Let's back this up and we'll try the hub on here. Yep, okay, how's that? A little chamfer in there, but let's go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna come in there and make sure that's a real sharp root there, radius and radius, or chamfer and chamfer. This is where a DNMP comes in handy sometimes. radius on there and what I, I just poke it into that corner a little bit so that I know that anything that slides against here is going to be against the flat shoulder all right and then we'll just go ahead and with the, our uh, edge breaking file those are clean all right now we'll just part it off and it's no biggie as far as our real thickness that we're going to part off here. I'm going to get rid of some of these chips so they don't grab and fly in our face. All right. Um, it looks like we're deep enough. So we're going to go ahead and at least give it, uh, oh, I don't know, 3 sixteenths of an inch here. Looks good. A couple hundred.
go check the pit. All right, baby's warm. All right, I think we got this cleared out. We got uh, our T-nut down in here. All right, we're gonna use that as a stud. And I'm just gonna go down here and we're gonna put this right on over at the top of there. All right, we got a little excess threads there, that nut the bottom out. So we're gonna go ahead and grab us some washer shims here. Uh, that ought to be enough. All right, just so that we can take up that difference there. And we're using the flange nut because we know we want a good stout nut there. Now we'll be able to rotate this rotate this until we get these two studs right here in straight line uh, because that is a known flat uh, flat in our drawing we knew that those two holes are straight across in relationship to the bore so we're going to set that up with our axis cross slide here and uh, we're going to go ahead and put two studs in here and hold the parallel and then we're going to dial the side of the parallel and then once we have that running true, then we're going to tighten up the bottom here. And then we can come over and we can locate this hole here. And then come over and locate center of those holes there. And then we'll have a known distance out this way here. And then from center line, we already know that it's drawn out here. And it's uh, 7 eighths this way and 7 eighths that way. This one here is 3 eighths of an inch down from those. And then we're just going to be picking out and planning out what straight line is in relationship to this arm. And this arm is probably going to be straight in line as well. It kind of looks like that right now. But we want to confirm that. So that we set the other arm up here. We know where to put this in relationship to the table. And then come over and dial this and we'll be able to put these holes in. The other, the other knuckle. <clears throat> Alright, studs are a little sticky in these. So I'm running the tap down through them. So we have no problem. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to screw these two studs in here, and we got those anchored down. And we just want those kind of semi-secure there. Now we got a piece of key stock here, and we actually we just checked it on our table here, just making sure that it's not rocking anywhere. The accuracy we're looking for is just a basic <clears throat> alignment, and we'll go ahead and. Alright, basic alignment and we're just going to be holding this off of off of center here, off of this direction here so that we got this travel distance right here to create our motion of being in line, this way, that way, alright. So we're going to get an indicator, get it up off of here and uh, All right, so we get a dial indicator. Get back here, so we can we can clamp this to here without it hitting anything. All right, and we're just gonna come into like zero there, or close to it. All right. There's about 50 thousandths in that length of run there. I'm going to pull it back towards this. I'm going to tighten it up. Well, we probably would have never been able to do that again. But that is in a line right there. All right, we're just going to verify it. We're going to put this right on zero there. <laughs> it goes about a minus half, and now it's making us move back to zero and about plus a quarter. So um, the trueness of this square, actually just going like this, I can make it go a half a thousand, wiggling back and forth. All right. 
now that we've we know that those two studs are straight in line with the table that's what our Jeff objective was now we can go ahead and remove this indicator here and remove our straight bars all right now we're going to come back and we're going to dial in this circle here Pull these two studs out. Actually, we'll leave these two studs in. We're going to dial this bearing register right there, and then set our our travel dial or our readout to zero. And then we're going to take the edge finder. And we're going to come over to touch the edge on the outside there, and then subtract half of the uh, nine sixteenths on the width there. And that'll give us center line. So that'll tell us from zero out to the center of that run right there. Okay, I'm using a coaxial indicator here to indicate this bore or center of this bore. And I like to go ahead and put just a little bit of light lubrication on my bore when I spin uh, this with the machine. And this indicator is made to go ahead and rotate the spindle by hand or I turn on the machine. And then you can crank your both your axes to minimize the flexing or the indicating back and forth until you minimize the amount of run. And you can see when I go past it and then down to it and then there's zero. All right, now we'll set our readout to zero on our X and our Y. All right, now we want to we want to go ahead and we're going to move our Y over until we take the edge finder there, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull up out our our uh, coaxial indicator here. And we're going to switch it out to an edge finder. Now this edge finder is uh, half an inch, so we know that we're going to be we're going to be uh, 250 thousandths shy. Now, when we touch that back side, we also got to subtract half of that that uh, unit there. So, uh, a unit. <laughs> we're going to have to subtract half the thickness of the the stud here, and that is uh, 562 there. Point. 562 divided by 2 equals 281 minus 0.250 equals 31. So when we go from center over to here, we subtract 31 thousandths from that, and we're on center with with that distance out to the center. All right. So when I'm using the edge finder or wiggler, I like to be a little bit on the higher speed. There, we're going to be. We're going to go ahead and we're going to be about 660 on our RPMs here. Alright. <clears throat> now we're going to hold this on the back side. And we're going to come into our edge here. Making sure we got enough clearance there. And as soon as the wiggler kicks off to the side like that, that's, that's going to be our number. Alright. So that's 1568 one, minus 31. 168 minus 31 1537 1 inch 537 is center line from your bearing out to this alright and then center center would be seven eighths all right we cranked it over seven eighths of an inch which would put us right above that stud and we cranked it back our dimension to get us uh one five three seven and it definitely looks symmetrical even 
right above that stud. All right, now we take we we took our square stock and we put it against that face, and it almost looks like we toe in this way a little bit. And when we stare down on here, it looks somewhat that this arm is straight line in here. But how do we actually figure this twist in relationship to the other part where we have no studs to go on? So I'm going to put my indicator on here, come back to zero, and then come over here with my pointer. Okay, so let's put the pointer in here. And now let's come back to zero. We can always go back to those numbers. We know we're, we're, we're all set on our dial now, but let's, let's stay right at zero. And let's come on down here. Let's go over this edge right here. Let's see what we look like. Right there. <clears throat> and let's take a measurement from that casting lip there. Out is exactly 200 thousandths. And that's kind of a flashing whether that actually makes sense or not. Okay, let's continue on over here. Let's come on down in this area right here and just kind of see where we're at. We're going to actually have to come up. Okay. That point almost comes down to that leading edge of that, which we're, we're working, this is a cast surface, okay, but this is cast and flat, and that's pretty, for how far out from center that is, that's a pretty good, uh, I'd have to say that's, that's pretty good distance to reference the rotation out here. I mean, what, what do we got to play with here, you know? Okay, this is what we come up with is is we hit zero here. We found out how far we had to go over here. We dialed in our straight line. Then we came down here with our pointer that gives the center of the spindle right now and our measure from the edge of that hole and we are coming out at like 420. Uh, we're going to call that anywhere between 400 and 4375, 7 16 In that ballpark area, we're going to call that the rotation dimension there. And that's what we're going to use on the other one. All right, so there's not, I mean, it's, there is no real scientific on here, but we set this one up and we know that this is about the, the distance in relationship to the, the pivot point of, of this knuckle here and we like that dimension there so that's how we're figuring out we were 200 out from this and we we're 400 to 4375 from the taper point of the uh, ball joint that plugs into there we're going to use that as reference we don't see anything else that is square enough or looks i mean we laid this on here and there's no way to actually create that as a straight line we can eyeball it and it looks semi square to this but it's not exactly it's actually towed in this way a little bit all right so we're gonna unbolt that one and put in our other one and start dialing it in all right before we get in here dialing let's let's really kind of like rough this out let's get i think this taper yeah the drill Okay, this taper kind of comes down into that bore, and I can actually just kind of like eyeball the gap in it here. And uh, we're like 48 thousandths, but that, that could be the play in, in this unit down here compared to where the other one was in relationship to the T-nut slot here. Alright, so 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to call that zero. And we're going to call that one there zero. And let's go ahead. We're going to have to move the camera just slightly. All right, we got you moved. Now the table can move past you. All right, so our first stop is right here at the corner. Now we said that was uh, one, one two hundred, I believe, was what we said. And okay, this is like. 225. All right. 225. And that's that's kind of in the same line there. Okay, let's see what we got here. We're we're about 450. Okay, so we're going to have to we're going to tap this out. like 420 all right now let's go back to our zero let's see how close we are okay by eye that looks pretty good all right we're going to tighten this down all right, we're going to put our coaxial indicator and we're going to swing this bore right here. We're going to have to lower this down. Not bad, swinging like within 20 thousandths, but let's put some uh, let's put some lube in here and we'll get it spinning. And we'll reset our zero at this point here. That was just a little bit of in and out. And now here's a little bit on the Y. And bring it right. All right, that's zero. Put our pointer back in. Okay, we're 225. Uh, 420 okay we're gonna call that good we're gonna make sure we're cinched down now we can come up here and we're gonna start milling the square or um, not square we're gonna start milling this flat up here on the top before we actually start that we're gonna put a screw jack and another toe clamp right on here to help hold this in another a aspect here um, we, we this could be strong enough to hold it, but I want to add a little bit more strength to it. So I'm going to put a screw jack and a toe clamp with a ball bearing. All right, let's go ahead and we're going to we're going to put a screw jack right under that edge right there, and we're going to put a ball bearing up here. That looks a little a little abused or used. Mm. Alright, let's see if we gotta get a clamp bar in here. Uh, we're gonna need a little longer stud there.
once you get it kind of rocked into place there. It almost feels like we got something under here. It's not really jiving. Now we feel, we feel confident. All right, and this, that one's tight. All right, now we can, now we can move over here and set up the millet. 